let's just have a quick moment of silence for the ending of the series of videos. <laughs> Please do another one. I've just got an Ikea detox. Please. I would love for you to start another one of these. Another episode, please? What about mine? You? Do another one, please. Please. You should do more of these vids. Please, do more vods of cages. The hamsters are cute. No, do more. Do one more, please, please. Please do more. Can you please just do one? More video. Can you do another reaction to your subscribers' hamster cages? You should video? do more cage reactions. Can you do Next. a cage reaction video? If you do another cage reaction, can I, I please be in I know you don't want to do them anymore, but I would love more cage reactions. XX. If you hit 500k, could you do another cage reaction? You should do another reacting to my subscribers' hamster cages. I've been waiting all my life for another cage reaction. Okay, I'll do it. Since you guys liked the cage reaction series so much, I decided to bring it back for one more time, this time on Instagram. So I asked you guys to go post your hamsters enclosures on Instagram and then use the hashtag VRCageReact. And there are 482 posts in this hashtag. So unfortunately, I'm not able to use everyone's photo. Um, I'm very sorry about that. I tried to pick a variety of different enclosures, but Go ahead and check out the hashtag. There are so many amazing cages on it with so many different ideas that could give you inspiration for your hamster cages, or maybe if you wanna give somebody a little bit of advice, definitely go check it out. So this first enclosure is amazing. I'm pretty sure this is the PAX enclosure from Ikea. It's just a giant wardrobe that you flip on its back, but look at how amazing this enclosure is. Not only for its size, but how full they've filled it. I love everything about it. It's just amazing. And I'm sure their hamster, honestly, probably very much so <laughs> enjoys it. There's a huge sand area. I'm also not too sure what type of hamster is in this. I think a Robrowski would have a blast in there with that large of a sand bath. So, and based on other things, I'm gonna say they're a robo. Maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> but absolutely amazing enclosure. There's just so much going on and I'm sure that whatever hamster lives in this is super happy. The next enclosure we have here, I can't tell if it's homemade or not and they didn't say if it is or not, but it possibly is. I'm really enjoying all of the different substrates they have in there. It looks like they have regular bedding along with some possibly aspen, some sand. I love the terracotta pot in the sand bath. It's so cute. Um, as well as some soil near the wheel area. I also love the cork wheel. It's just, it looks so nice. This next enclosure is a 120 by 50 centimeter enclosure. And look at the little wishing well. I think they made that, that is adorable. But it's, I love the way they have the big area of moss. It just gives it a really nice pop of color. Natural cages can be really pretty, especially when you give the pops of green. I love when people do that. And I love the wood slice staircases. That gives me my own ideas to use in the enclosure. One thing I do notice is the popsicle stick fence. Be really, really careful with that because I had a really bad experience with it. Even like the smallest of like gap can be potentially dangerous. And whenever I see popsicle sticks, I kind of get a little nervous, but just keep that in mind. This next enclosure here is something that I've honestly never seen before and they have a two level, six feet by three feet DIY enclosure. This is very interesting and I have no clue how this was made. It looks like it's someone in someone's bedroom. So that's awesome, it's huge. And I'm not sure if they have access to the top level 24 seven or not, or maybe it's just supervised. I would be careful if it's 24 seven just because um, I don't know if they could escape possibly, um, and also do be careful of the, how tall some of the drops are. 
if they climbed onto a structure and decided to just jump off because some hamsters are crazy. They honestly have terrible depth perception. So <laughs> just be careful of that. Oh, look how cute he is. <laughs> He's so cute. Another thing is I would honestly probably add more bedding into there. It looks like you have a lot of height wise to be able to fit a ton more bedding. So that's something that I would do. I also do see you have a critter trail cage in there. That's a very interesting thing to place in there. I'm not sure if I would personally do it um, just because I wouldn't want them to climb the bars or like get a foot stuck. I do know some hamsters have done that before. Um, but I would probably just start with adding more bedding and some other natural enrichments, like some forage and things. Next up we have, I think this is a bin cage. It has 620 square inches of floor space, as well as aspen and paper bedding, and then some sand and eco earth. I often get questions about how you should set up your bin cage. And I think this is a really good setup idea. I really like all of the things going on. There's a lot for them to do. They do feature some different substrates. They have a multi-chamber hideout in there, as well it is more semi-crowded. Also, look at their adorable hamster, aww. This next setup really caught my eye, and the way they've set it up is definitely really interesting. So it's an Ikea Detoff split into two sections. One side they have bedding all the way to the top, which is 15 inches, I think, if I can remember correctly, and then that side has a domed lid. The other side is a sand bath area and I think there's a tube connecting it. And they also have this really interesting chamber hide. I've seen these on Instagram before. I'm curious to know if your robo hamster goes in here and if you can like see him hanging out or not. That would be <laughs> really, really cool. But I've never seen anybody do a setup like this and I'm curious to see how your hamster actually enjoys it. This next enclosure is a DIY enclosure and it has 2,475 square inches of floor space. They said they made it from melamine wood and then glass on the front. They have four different substrates, Aspen, KT Clean & Cozy, Eco Earth, and Repti Sand. Um, they did the half Clean & Cozy and half Aspen. So half of the cage has 25 inches and the other half is 20 to 22 inches. Um, and they just have a lot going on and I love it. I love all of the different leaves. It's very nature-like. I feel like a hamster would really enjoy this. And I also like that the silent runner gives it a pop of color. Also look at all of that bedding. That looks awesome. I really wanna go dig a hole in the KT cleaning cozy and take a nap in it because that looks very enjoyable. I would love to see burrows in the front that would be so cool to see a hamster burrowing in the front and i'm sure your hamster honestly loves this the next enclosure we have here is a you and me hamster cage with 210 square inches of floor space and a mix of kt clean and cozy and aspen shavings and they did order some coroplast to put on the mesh floor the first thing i'm going to recommend is work towards upgrading the enclosure while I know the high rise gives it like a second level type thing, it doesn't increase the floor space. It just kind of gives you more space to put other accessories, but it's not giving them the proper space they need, especially since you do have a Syrian hamster and they are so, so cute, but they are going to need a lot more space and they tend to be very hard to please species of the hamster world. Syrians tend to be big divas. So they do need a lot of space for their enrichment. I do like that you have included a sand bath in there. That's great. So then they're able to dig around and do some enrichment in there. Another thing is you're going to want to upgrade the hamster's wheel. It can't tell too much from the picture, but I think that's a six and a half silent spinner. And for a Syrian, it's really recommended that you have a 10 to 12 inch sized wheel in order for their backs to not curve because when a hamster runs in the wheel if their back is curving constantly it can actually cause them back problems later in life and it can actually cause them to have a hunched back and just it's not fun for the hamster later in life so those are the things that i would work towards upgrading the next enclosure here is a ikea linman and it is 100 centimeters by 58 centimeters 
I really love the way that they've set it up. I think it looks really, really awesome. They have a sand bath in there and I love all of the herbs and the greenery. I really, really love this house with like the wavy ramp and then the tiny little mushroom is so cute. As well as this heart dish that they have here with some moss and rose petals and different herbs. I think that's really, really awesome. And I'm sure the cage smells really good with all these herbs. <laughs> We have another bin cage set up. So for everybody with bin cages, this is another really awesome way to set one up. They have a multi-chamber hide, they have a sand bath, they have a dish of cocoa fiber. I think that's what it's called. Co yeah, co <laughs> I can't remember what the name, I think it's coconut fiber. They also have some different cork logs and grapevine wood as well as some forage. So it looks like a really enriching set, set, set. It looks like a really enriching setup. This next enclosure here is a Critter Nation cage, which I don't see this too often. So I wanted to show you this. It does make an awesome cage. They do have the cement mixing bin as the base. And this is just a suggestion. You don't have to take this. But if you want to get the fo full potential of the Critter Nation, because the cement bin does taper in, it kind of does cut out on the, a little bit of the floor space. But instead, you could go with an option of plexiglass, which is the more expensive option. Or you can get coroplast, cut some little slits, put tape on the outside, and then that makes a perfectly sized base and you can make it as tall as you want as well um and uh, then you get the full potential but i do think what you have going on right here is good you have a multi-chamber hideout you got a sand bath and you did say that you're going to be having some uh, more herbs leaves and sprays on the way which is also awesome i'm not sure about what this tree trunk hide is it i can't tell if it's one of the like plastic ones or if it's the ones that are made for chewing. I'm not sure. Sometimes you have to be really careful with the ones that are edible. Sometimes they have ingredients like um, honey or wood shavings and then it makes them want to ingest it and you really don't want them ingesting shavings. So just beware of that. This next enclosure here is a 100 by 50 centimeter aquarium filled with equip be power litter i've never heard of, i've never heard of that i what i've hmm you'll have to tell me what exactly that is because i've never heard of that type of bedding but if it's holding up their burrows then that's awesome i really like the different wood slices you have in here those are really awesome um i like the one at the top with the tiny ones and then you could put little seeds in there and it would be a great forage spot I also really like the um, mushroom hide. I have an obsession with mushrooms currently, really like mushrooms, but I also really like the glass bowl. What is that called? Glass cookie jar? I don't know what you would call that. Glass bowl with the other substrate. I'm not sure what substrate it is. Maybe it looks like corn cob, but I really like that as well. This next enclosure is really interesting. They've completely DIY'd it themselves. So the entire enclosure they made themselves. I really like the bottom with the little secret peek out tunnels, if that's what you would call it. Um, as well as they do have a really big sand bath. They are a robo hamster. They left a little video clip of her and she's super cute. One thing that just worries me slightly is the amount of height the platforms have because she is a robo she is pretty small um, so we do have to be careful with the amount of height the levels are because they could just jump off like i said previously um, and the wheel is at the top and it looks like some type of silent spinner so i'm assuming it goes super duper fast um, it does look really big so she may be able to control it easy but if she can't and she accidentally like slips out um, I would worry about her falling. So that is just something to keep in mind. Maybe you could like create some type of taller fencing so that there's no way that she could fall off. Um, and yeah, this next cage is another DIY one and it has 100 by 50 centimeters. They say they have 10 inches on one side and five inches of bedding on the other. They have a multi-chamber hideout, 11 inch wheel. 
there's their cute little Syrian hamster. They're so adorable. One thing I would try to add is a sand bath. It is pretty important for the average healthy hamster to have a sand bath so that it does give them an enrichment. It also gives them an opportunity to bathe themselves or some just use it as a bathroom and I find that very convenient. Makes cleaning the cage a little bit easier. Um, another thing is you could probably put 10 inches of bedding all throughout the enclosure if you created some um, little platforms. So then you could put the wheel on that and then that way you're able to put the bedding more even. This next enclosure is not this person's but their friend's enclosure. Um, this is a 40 gallon aquarium with an 8 inch wheel, 10 inches of bedding, sand bath, multi-chamber hideout and other accessories and this is for a robo named Lily um, we have the same frog hideout so that is awesome <laughs> and I really like how busy the enclosure is especially for a robo hamster they do tend to be more skittish so really crowding the cage tends to make them feel a lot more safer um, and not out in the open and you do have a nice big sand bath. Um, one thing I do notice is the softwood hide. I would be cautious upon that. Some people do say that they can leak resin because it is made from pine. Um, and then also sometimes the softwood hides are made with nails. So that's just something to keep in mind. This next enclosure is for a hybrid dwarf and they have a DIY cage that has 1,152 square inches of floor space. All of the heavy items are on stilts and there's an average of 15 inches of bedding. So I really like this enclosure and I also like, <laughs> I see, um, I think Erin's Animals did a tutorial on this heart hideout and I thought that was so funny. It's super cute in the cocoa fiber. I really like everything that is going on in here, as well as your little hybrid, so cute. The next enclosure is another IKEA Detoff with 10 inches of bedding on the deepest side and then an 11 inch wooden wheel. And they have other substrates such as cocoa soil, aspen, and cocoa husk. And this is for a Syrian hamster. I really love the herbs. They give such a pop of color. <laughs> I love the purple. I also really enjoy the different substrates you included and all of the different wooden pieces, the bamboo root, uh, grapevine wood, all of the different forge looks awesome. Look at him in the cocoa soil. That is adorable. And he is so beautiful. Look at his sub box. He looks like a, a, a baby deer kind of, but not really, but the spots look like a baby deer. <laughs> the next enclosure we have here appears to be a homemade one. I'm not too sure, so correct me if I'm wrong. I really like the tubes that you've zip tied to the back. I think that's really interesting. I haven't seen that done before. One thing that I forgot to mention in previous cages was when using bendable bridges as dividers or like fences, um, it's important to put moss in between the slats because the little wood sticks aren't always perfect. Sometimes they're like curved or like weird and wonky. They can leave gaps just big enough sometimes for like toes or legs. And it has happened before where our hamster has gotten their legs stuck and that's not good. So to prevent that, you can just pick up some reptile moss and get some non-toxic school glue and just attach it on like that. Or sometimes you can even just shove it in because some gaps are pretty big where you can just put it in there. This is honestly something I've never seen anyone else do, but this is an enclosure where they've attached two of the Living World Eco large habitats. Unfortunately, the Living World Eco enclosure is discontinued, which honestly sucks because it's a really great cage, but the fact that you attach two is awesome. I love that you have all this space to do a bunch of things. Um, I might add in some other substrates then because you have so much room to put more. Um, I'm not sure if, I think you have a multi-chamber hideout in there. I think so, yeah. But I would add in some different substrates because you do have all this space to be able to do that. I feel like there's so much potential for your enclosure. This next enclosure is the Pahut enclosure with 1,035 square inches of floor space. Um, and they went ahead and removed like those, I think there's two levels. They removed those out, which is great because then you can 
put bigger items in there. Um, but since you did remove those, I would honestly recommend putting a lot more bedding. You could probably go up to like the second notch in that, in the wood and put like a bunch of substrate. And then also you could just put your sand bath on some dowels. So then you don't have to worry about like it crushing a hamster if they decide to burrow. Your hamster is so cute sitting on the wheel. They are a Syrian hamster, so do keep in mind that an eight inch wheel often is too small and it's really good to try to aim for a 10 to 12 inch wheel. The bigger, the better. And the last enclosure for this video is a living world eco habitat with 960 square inches. I think this might be the medium one. They have a lot of different substrates. So they said they have Two different types of bedding, coconut soil, aspen shavings, and alfalfa hay. Um, one thing with the alfalfa hay, I would be really, really careful with it. Alfalfa is one of the more rougher types of hays, so it's really pokey and it has the potential to accidentally like poke them in the eye or something. I would more prefer like a third cut Timothy hay or orchard grass hay would be way softer. Another thing that I would recommend is evening out the bedding so that it's even all the way. And this is really easy to do. You just need some dowels and you can attach the dowels onto like almost everything so that everything kind of is able to stand. I also noticed the wheel. Um, I've actually had this wheel like a long, long, long time ago when I started out owning hamsters. And the thing about it is that it has, it's attached with those bars on the outsides of the wheels. Um, and this can be a risk to the hamster. I did have a friend who actually adopted a hamster who got its leg, I think, stuck in the in between the bars and it basically ripped the leg. This is so gruesome. And basically ripped the skin and like the leg and it was really, really not a good situation. So I would likely change the wheel just to prevent any potential injuries from happening. I had so much fun looking at all of these enclosures. Instagram is a really great place to find inspiration for hamster enclosures. There's always some awesome ideas out there and a lot of these cages even gave me ideas for my own enclosures. So I'm gonna go take a nap now and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye! And see. <laughs> One more, Kate. That's two. One more. He, 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 he. Stop, people. I have to take a sippy break.